Welcome back to another video talking about some of the special rules of Sovereign Chess. True to the name Sovereign Chess, each army in chess has a sovereign piece. The king, of course, represents the most important piece of any chess army because if that king is checkmated, then the game is lost. While the king is one of the weakest pieces on the board, oftentimes it's seen as a representation of the player itself who has to do everything in their power to protect that piece. In sovereign chess, kings are very important in the game, not just to, to prevent being checkmated, but also in some of the more special rules that come up. Prior uh, to this video, I talked about the colored squares, and I mentioned that we were gonna discuss the black and white squares in the middle of the board. One of the first questions that many players often ask is, if I'm playing black and I land on a white square, do I get to control the white army? And the answer to that question is no. If you, the person watching the video, if you're playing the white army and you have the white king, then you are in fact sovereign over those white pieces. Regardless of who is on either of the white squares, as the white player, you can continue to control the white army. But kings come up in a number of other ways in the game involving very special situations which we call regime changes. This can happen in three distinct ways in a game of sovereign chess. First is, if I have a pawn up here, we talked earlier about the fact that pawns promote inside this four by four square. I talked about the fact that in traditional chess, we would promote a pawn to any major piece, to a rook, to a knight, to a bishop, or to a queen. But in sovereign chess, you can also promote your piece to a king. Now you'll notice what I did. You'll notice I removed the original king off the board and put it in that new location. This is what we would call a coup d'etat. This is not the king actually jumping another number of spaces. This actually represents a, a, a smaller piece in the army that has decided to take over being king of the army and in fact has cut off the head of the king, so to speak, and therefore that is the new king of the army. This player still controls black. If my king were in danger here, that might be one way to get my army out of danger by creating a new king. Another way that regime change can happen is if I control a particular color, like if I control green here, I might have a green pawn that I am promoting as well. Like I mentioned earlier, you can promote that green pawn to any other green piece. So again, that could be a rook, a bishop, a knight, or a queen, but I could also promote that to a green king. Now that would cause two things to happen immediately. The first thing is that I would remove the black king from the board. This is what we call an overthrow, where a piece of the controlled army has decided to take over the reign of, of what's going on on the board, and so now we have a green king. And also the black pieces, now without a king, are not under anyone's control, and rather control is determined by one of these black squares, which is why we have the black squares in the middle of the board. If I later move out a green piece to one of those black squares, then as the green player now, I can control the black armies. But of course, my opponent could move out a piece and control those black armies as well. In fact, I've seen many games of sovereign chess where a player gives up control of their original army and the other player then takes control of those pieces. The last situation where regime change can occur might be in this kind of made up board setup that I have here. Uh, of course, you'll notice that a lot of the black pieces have been captured. I haven't really been playing a game, but what can often happen in sovereign chess is that one player can use the colored pieces to kamikaze their opponent, which might cause one player, for example, the black player in this case, to be losing a lot of their pieces. Now, if I'm playing black, this is a pretty desperate situation for me, but I do do have a, a saving grace, and that is that I control at least a couple of colors here. And you might notice that the, the yellow armies, these uh, eight uh, yellow pieces that are still on the board, while they are not as strong as my original army at the beginning of the game, they in fact have more pieces and better pieces that I have here uh, currently in my position as black. 
My concern is that if the white player comes down and they threaten to take this, uh, my, my black pawn on this yellow square, then they can kind of shut me out and win the game pretty quickly. So the last situation of regime change is what I call defection. And that says this, if I'm in control of another color, then on my turn, instead of making a move, I can change my king to a king of that color. Now that means that even if the white player were to take that black pawn on that, on that yellow square, that I would still, as the yellow king, be in control of all of the yellow pieces. Of course, uh, like I mentioned earlier with, uh, with, with overthrow or promoting another pawn, um, this has the effect of losing control of these black pieces. And so again, uh, the black, control of the black pieces would go to whoever landed on one of the black squares like this. So these are just some situations where it may be advantageous for me to change either the color of my king or the position of my king in order to save my army. As you can see, I've tried to make sovereign chess different and more expansive, but not much more complicated than traditional chess. There are a few other rules about castling and en passant that you can look at in your rule sheet, or you can check out on our website, sovereignchess.com. Of course, feel free to comment or email me, mark, M-A-R-K, at sovereignchess.com if you also want further information about the game. Thanks for watching these videos, and most of all, have fun playing this game.